Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. We are looking at using order of operations to evaluate or calculate the values of each of these number expressions. Okay, so this is uh, from CPM course three, and this is chapter three, number or section uh, 3.1.3, and it's number 3-27. So the, the directions say calculate the following values using order of operations, show your steps, verify your answers with a calculator. So I would like you to do this without a calculator, but then you can use a calculator to check your answers if you'd like. Okay. So the key thing here is order of operations, right? We got to remember what our order of operations are. So I'm going to write them over here. So we have them. Order of operations, remember, is known as that, uh, as that acronym PEMDAS. Some remember it as, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, but PEMDAS. And what does PEMDAS mean? Well, the P represents parentheses or grouping symbols. Uh, you can use P for parentheses, uh, but I'm going to oops, write grouping symbols because sometimes you have brackets. Sometimes you have um, other types of grouping symbols. And then, but parentheses are most common. Exponents is the E. Multiply, divide. That's what the D is, right? So the M and D, multiply. I'm going to abbreviate and divide. And when you when you look at it, why do I write them on the same line? Because it doesn't. It, the order doesn't matter. What orders is you go from the left to the right, right? You start in the left, you just go from left to right. Whatever comes first, whether multiply or divide comes first. And then the A and the S is add and subtract. And again, same thing. Order. You start from the left. And you work your way to the right. So from left to right, whatever comes first, add or subtract when you're at that step. But always multiply or divide before you add and subtract. That's the part that we got to remember we'll go through. So here's my orders of operations. So let's look at each of these. So A. To do A, first thing we're looking for is I, I, can, I can tell you what operations we have here, right? When you see parentheses with single numbers, that's a negative 4 and a negative 2 inside the parentheses, those parentheses together just mean multiply. So I have multiply, I have subtraction, and then another, when you have a number right next to a set of parentheses, it also means multiply. And then inside this set of parentheses are two numbers with a subtraction between. So I need to do this first because when there's an operation, when there's something to do inside the parentheses, that's when it comes first. These parentheses just are being used to show multiplication. These parentheses are you being used to show multiplication plus you have some math to do inside. So let's start there. 2 minus 5. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So now I'm going to rewrite just so that way we can see each step. Now I have negative 4 times negative 2 minus 6 times negative 3. So now I have multiplication, multiplication, and subtraction. So what comes first? Multiply before you subtract. So I'm going to multiply those two. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. Minus, and then I can just multiply straight across, right? Continue on, multiply from left to right. So multiply that first, now multiply this. Six times negative three is negative 18. So now I have eight minus negative 18. Well, when I subtract a negative, remember subtracting a negative is adding the opposite. It all becomes addition, right? It's a double negative here. You're minus a negative. So minus a negative all changes to addition. And so eight plus 18 is 26. There's my first answer. Okay, let's look at B. B, let's see again, what do I have? I have subtraction, then I have this big set of parentheses and some math inside of it. So I, inside I got to do some math. And then on the outside of the parentheses, I have an exponent, and then I have addition. So I'm going to be using my order of operations. First is, what do you have inside the parentheses to do? So <clears throat> I look inside my parentheses and I say, okay, I've got subtraction and multiplication. I don't subtract first. That's usually the common mistake is they want to just go left to right, but I have to do this multiplication first. So inside the parentheses, I have 17 now minus 12. Three times four is 12. I'm still not done with my parentheses, so keep going. Inside the parentheses, 17 minus 12 is five. So now I ended one number on the inside of the parentheses. I'm going to rewrite everything else that I have. I have that 23 minus inside the parentheses, just a five on the outside of the parentheses. Remember, was that squared? and then plus six. So I'm done with grouping symbols, now on to exponents. 
exponents here, I have one, right? Five squared. Five squared is 25. Remember, squared means you multiply by itself. So it's five times five is 25, then plus six. Now, I don't have any multiply and divide, only subtract and add. And remember, you don't, it's not add first, then subtract, it's just left to right. So 23, I do this one, 23 minus 25 is negative two. Then negative two plus six finally equals four. So my final answer for that one is four. All right, C. Looks like I've got big sense of parentheses here that I got to do some math inside for both of these. So let's do that. And then on the outside of the parentheses, remember that 14 next to it would be multiplication. And it looks like there's division between those. So I got to get these parentheses down to one number before I do that multiply and that divide. So inside here, I have add, subtract, and multiply. So we're going to do the multiply first, right? You always multiply before you add, subtract. So inside that set of parentheses now, I have 2 plus 3 minus 4. With add, subtract, you just go from left to right. So 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 minus 4 now is 1. So in that set of parentheses, I have a 1. Okay? And then now I've got to work this set of parentheses. So in here, I have subtraction and I have uh, exponents. So I do my exponents first. My exponents 4 squared is 16 minus 3 squared is 9. Now I can subtract. 16 minus 9 is 7. All right. So I've dealt with the, I've now down to one number inside the parentheses so I can look at the operations that were going on around it. That was multiplication, 14 times 1, and then divided by 7. So multiply, divide is all I've got, and I just do it left to right. So 14 times 1 is 14, then 14 divided by 7. Final answer is 2. Last one. All right. Decimal operations, right? So decimals, and it looks like all I've got is minus, plus, plus, minus, plus. So nothing but addition and subtraction. So uh, with addition and subtraction, remember, it's from left to right. So I start here. So I'm going to do those two. 12.7 minus 18.5. Now I'm asking you to do this without a calculator. So how would you do it? Well, I'm subtracting a small minus a big, so I know my answer is going to be negative. But to figure this out, just do the, do the subtraction the other way, but you know your answer is going to be minus. So I line up. Remember when you're subtracting? Let's see if I got some space here. When I'm subtracting, you line up the decimal places. So 18, oops, 18.5, and it's 12.7. So I'm subtracting 18.5 and 12.7. So you use the standard algorithm for subtraction. The only thing is you got to remember to line up your decimal place. So I regroup from... Take a take us a, a, a ones here from the eight, make that a seven. So now I have fifteen minus seven is eight. Decimal place, remember, drives down, and then seven minus two there is the five, and one minus one is zero. So I have five point eight when I subtract those. But remember, because I'm going small minus big, it's a negative five point eight. Now I I continue on right. I've got my negative five point eight. So now I take this number. And I combine it with the, add it to the 15. Well, I have a negative and a positive. When I have a negative and a positive number, you actually subtract the numbers and the larger one keeps the sign. Who's bigger? 15, is there more positives or more negatives? There's more positives. So I know my answer is gonna be a positive, but I just have to subtract those to figure out what it is. So once again, line up the decimal places. Where's the decimal on 15? Remember, it's at the very end, just add a zero. And then I have a 5.8. And I'm subtracting them because they're opposite signs. So once again, regroup, make this a 14, subtract. So I get two there and subtract, I get nine. So 9.2 when I subtract those. So that becomes 9.2. That's one there, 9.2. So now I have a positive 9.2 and I add that to 6.3. I'm going to do a little quicker here. So you know to line up decimal places, in this case, two positives, you add them. Those become 15.5, right? Now I have 15.5, and in this case, minus 1. So 15.5 minus 1, uh, I'm going to put it down here. 15.5 minus 1 is 14.5, right? And then the last one, I got to combine it. So add plus, so those two combine. So I have a, a plus 28.5 and 14.5. So my final answer uh, looks like it's going to be... 
that can be a 43. Yeah, 43.0 or 43 exactly. Okay, there you go.